Um, so when Citrus began, of course, you know, one of the big dreams in Citrus was this notion of smart dust, which is wireless sensor networks, which were used to monitor things like occupancy and uh, uh, temperature and uh, uh, temperature sounds, etc., and even little cameras on them. And I think that this idea of using wireless as a distributed sensing modality was really ingrained into Citrus. I think the genius of this project that you're going to hear about is really sort of the next step of that evolution. It is the idea that the future isn't a $100 laptop. It's the cell phone in your pocket. And because you have cell phones in your pockets, they can be used as distributed sensing devices. And really, what matters is to have a clever way of offering services, which people want, on top of this distributed sensing. So the ingenuity of what you're talking about, what, what you're going to hear about, is really about using platforms that people carry around as distributed sensing devices. So not only is this experiment sort of a wonderful experiment in its own right, I think philosophically, it's just a wonderful, wonderful uh, way of thinking about distributed sensing and wireless services, and I'm sure Henry will tell you how Nokia deeply believes this. On the Berkeley campus, I think that the fire that has been lit here has now gone on in other different ways. Other colleagues like Eric Brewer have been thinking about using cell phones with uh, li little sensors on them for measuring pollution. And so they have them deployed on the streets of Accra in Ghana to be able to come up with real-time uh, measurements of sort of the levels of pollution on the streets of Accra. Uh, voluntarily put in taxi drivers, by taxi, carried by taxi drivers. In the city of San Francisco, we have them on street sweepers, you know, the, uh, the trucks that sweep the streets, also for measuring the levels of pollution in the city of San Francisco. There are other applications. Colleagues in bioengineering have suddenly realized that they can put uh, uh, cameras, uh, they, ca they can put microscopes on top of these, on top of the same Nokia phones, they're called cell scopes. And so the notion about using this to do remote diagnosis. So it's all sort of in this genre, this intellectual genre of, uh, of distributed sensing based on top of wireless sensor networks. I think that, however, in terms of sheer scale, and I think the fact that we've had these major partners, Department of Transportation, Caltrans, Nokia, Navtech, partner with, uh, of course, ITS and Citrus to pull off what I hope pull off what will be a, uh, just a really fantastic exemplar of this is really a tribute certainly to the people up on the podium and the legions of dedicated students and staff, some of whom you saw in the hallways that you came in. So please join me in welcoming the lead for the project, Alex Bayan. So I'm going to talk about Mobile Millennium, which is the name of the system we're launching today. Um, as we all know, the vast majority of the driving public in this country has a phone. And over the years, we have all become used to standard features which are in phones, such as multiple ringtones, cameras, text messaging. Well, in the very near future, GPS and mobile internet capabilities will become another such standard. And as most of us know, GPS is the electronic mapping uh, of a position of, in a geographic context. Now, GPS information on a map tells me which city I'm in, what street I'm on, which direction I'm going, and how fast I'm going. So, GPS has been around for many years. Um, and it, it has equipped all sorts of systems from autopilots for planes um, or uh, GPS kits for recreational um, uh, purposes. But what's crucial for this work is that very soon GPS will be in a phone near you and soon it will be on your new phone. And the transportation field will be among the first to benefit from this fact because very soon a significant portion of the population will be able to contribute to monitoring traffic. In fact, even if today a small percentage of us would share a few measurements from our trips um, when we drive, the result would be a network of sensors that provide information wherever there's people in cars. Today, UC Berkeley, Nokia, and Navtech have created a technology to achieve this dream, 
thanks to the generous support from our partners, in particular the California and the Federal Department of Transportation, as well as our private partner. Today, we are launching Mobile Millennium, a pilot traffic information system that uses GPS sensors in mobile phone and the existing cell uh, phone network infrastructure to gather and deliver real-time traffic information. Mobile Millennium will fuse the mobile phone data from the driving public um, with data from existing sensors, so users immediately get highway traffic information on their phones today. Mobile Millennium will also increase the amount of traffic data and areas of coverage as more and more users come online, so that, in fact, we hope that by April or May, uh, Mobile Millennium will have enough users so that we can start including side streets, arterial roads, expressways, and rural roads. As a primary university partner, Berkeley's work is really at the heart of the traffic estimation engine that runs inside Mobile Millennium. Today, UC Berkeley student and staff are proud to see their traffic models and algorithms go live, hopefully soon on the screen of your phone. The goal of our models and algorithms is to significantly and measurably enrich the traffic data available today and make it more accurate and more timely than ever before. The success of Mobile Millennium will mean that we can provide industry, government, academia, but most importantly, the driving public, you, with, most, with information that is new and that is uh, richer than before, in particular, travel time, speed estimates, developing delays, alternate routes, traffic predictions, and traffic advisories. As part of a public university, we are honored to be working on a project with such an enormous potential for the public benefit. And so I guess by now you probably wonder what Mobile Millennium will look like when it runs on your phone. And so to talk about how Mobile Millennium runs on the phone as well as privacy, I'm honored to introduce Dr. Henry Thierry, who is the head of Nokia Research and senior vice president of Nokia. Thank you very much. Okay, good morning from me too. It's been an early morning for many of us. Um, like we already heard, uh, if you remember, when we introduced cameras to handsets, we changed the world of recording experiences. When you introduce GPS to the handsets in the world, you change the world of location-based experiences. What we see today is one of those new changes. The traffic is the first one it's only first in the series, and you can only imagine where we can go with that. If you look at the, the solutions that are based on this, what I typically call the world's largest distributed sensing platform over several billion devices globally, uh, if you go to look at the client, it is a typical thing that you see uh, on a handset, which you can just push the same way, like take a camera picture, you see a map, you don't need to set any default values if you, if you, if you like the colors like it has. It's, it's actually quite nice. Red is usually a warning, so you know about it. It's a multimodal interface, so you can hear also the traffic reports located based, focused on what is your interest area, so that you don't necessarily have to look at it, which is a quite a good idea when you're driving. Uh, and also, one very important thing which is related to this generic family of services that one builds is the privacy. So you build these things by using what we call a privacy by design, which is that you take this information, you already strip a lot of identification information because it's not necessary for such a service. We are talking about aggregates, we are talking about statistical information, we are using encryption, we are looking at only the values of the, uh, the sensors at certain points in space, meaning some, somewhere on the roads. This way, we can always build these aggregate services without violating anybody's privacy. This is very important because the adoption of such a service is relying on them. One final thing which is usually uh, been asked for me for early adapters is that since we have the privilege of working already with uh, Navtech traffic, uh, all, already the early adapters get a very good um, use for this based on the prior information that you get from Navtech traffic. And each one of you then will contribute to get an even better picture for all of us. So I think this is a great project. It's been a great example of open innovation that we do at Nokia Research Center. Together with Berkeley, this has been a tremendously fast-paced journey from uh, 
the previous uh, trial that we had in February, and now we are here. So I just invite you, all guys, just come look at the same screen, look at how red the Bay Bridge is at the moment, and hopefully <laughs> it will get greener. Thank you. Yes, I need to disconnect myself. Thank you. My name is Harry Vacola. I'm uh, with Navtech. Uh, so first off, I'd like to say thank you uh, for uh, having us here, and thank you for having us uh, involved in this uh, uh, project. I'd, I'd like to take a minute or two just to, to uh, acknowledge and frankly applaud Caltrans for the vision and commitment it, it has had uh, to this project, but overall to bringing technologies, uh, leading technologies to the uh, transportation environment. Uh, Caltrans uh, nationally and internationally is recognized for being a leader in bringing new technologies to, to the benefit of the traveling public. And Mobile Millennium is one of those new technologies. Mobile Millennium has uh, has been recognized early on by Caltrans in its strategic planning for the transportation network. And frankly, uh, this technology is being brought to California first, thanks to the uh, efforts of Caltrans. So let me tell you very quickly a little bit about Navtech and our role in this activity. That was blocking my handsome face. <laughs> Shall I start over? <laughs> so uh, let me tell you a little about Navtech real quick and how we're uh, involved in this. And I think I just lost a minute of my three minutes, so I'll speak faster. Uh, for the past 15 years, GPS-enabled uh, maps have been the basis for uh, many, all of the uh, advanced mapping, routing, and navigation applications that uh, we hear about uh, through a variety of sources that many of us use on a daily basis. Uh, for 15 years now, we've seen the benefits of those uh, GPS maps. Uh, and today, an estimate is that at least 10 million times a day, people use navig a GPS navigation to route themselves uh, wherever they are headed. The, the point of that really is that those navigation, the benefits of using those navigation enabled, uh, those GPS enabled maps, is a savings of uh, millions of gallons of gas per day, uh, significant time and environmental impact. So Navtech, as you all know, is the largest provider of these GPS maps. What you don't know is that Navtech, or you may not know, is that Navtech is the largest provider and distributor of real-time traffic information to these applications in the world. And we see the mobile millennium, where we will be the processor and, and manager of that data, as uh, an expansion and an extension of the benefit capabilities of the combination of GPS maps and GPS traffic. The expectations are that uh, the tens of millions of map requests will now be superseded by hundreds of millions of real-time uh, traffic access points as a result of this technology once it is further deployed. That's our message basically is that the, this technology will save millions and millions of man hours in traffic, millions and millions of gasoline uh, consumption on a daily basis, and uh, a major impact on the environment going forward. So in conclusion, again, I want to, um, we're proud to be part of the uh, team that Caltrans has put together, including uh, Nokia, uh, CCIT, uh, and, and Navtech. So on behalf of all of us, thank you.
Studies have shown us that estimated travel times between selected locations are found to be the most practical, useful information that drivers can use to combat congestion. Numerous studies reveal that commuters appreciate and value timely information which reduces both the uncertainty and stress. So take a look in the Bay Area. We have one of the world-class 511 systems here in the Bay Area. People actually tune in and want information. But collecting and disseminating this quality information is very, very expensive. And so the, the, the quality of the travel time requires more deployment of sensors. And currently we use sensors in pavement, on top of the pavement, we use video and some transponder data, but we need more data. We also want to expand this information out to the rural parts of California. So you wonder why is that important? It's because we want to get to accidents faster. We want to save people's lives. We want to give you information when you're going to go skiing one day and you can't get up Interstate 80 or Highway 50. Why go if you're just going to get stuck at Applegate? We want you to have that information before you leave home. Under Caltrans' sponsorship, you know, one of the people that, the groups that was left out for um, thanking, and that's um, U.S. Department of Transportation. They're part of the partnership as well, as well as Citrus, and I think it's on the board here. And we believe successful deployment of this pilot traffic system will mark a paradigm shift in traffic data collection, demonstrating a deployable solution that expands beyond the current sensor deployment in both the urban parts of California as well as the rural. And so what I'm going to do now is the potential for this is very, very great. I'm going to see if I can do this here. So I actually did this myself. I, I, I came and I, I loaded onto my phone. It worked great. And you go to that website, traffic.berkeley.edu. You're going to get your cell phone, register your cell phone. That's probably the toughest thing to do is your telephone number when you get to that sheet. And you're going to get a text message, and you just say yes, yes, yes. And you're going to have a map on your phone. You're going to get traffic reports. This is great. So you're probably wondering, you know, in California, we have a hands-free law, right? Well, Nokia thoughts thinks of everything. So they have this hands, uh, fancy hands-free device that you can actually put your phone in. I'll show you exactly how it works. I have three on me now. So it's going to go like that on your window. And so you'll see the map there, and you'll be able to get your, your traffic information so it's hands-free. So they've thought of everything. So I want to thank you for being here today and welcome as an early adopter of this technology and give us some feedback on how well you think it's performing. We think that it's a paradigm shift, as I said before, in getting traveler information. So it'll make your commute a lot safer and smoother in the future. So thank you very much. And Tom West is going to provide some closing remarks. Okay, thank you, Randy. So first I'd like to thank uh, all the panelists this morning for a fantastic job in explaining this exceptional program that we call the Mobile Millennium. And I'd also like to say that, that this extraordinary partnership, which includes UC Berkeley, Caltrans, USDOT through the Safe Trip 21 program, <coughs> Citrus, Nokia and Navtech, and of course my organization, the California Center for Innovative Trans, uh, uh, trans uh, Transportation, that, that today's groundbreaking technology de deployment would not have been possible with, with, again, without this extraordinary partnership. And essentially, we achieved today something collectively that ni none of us could have, none of the partners could have achieved uh, separately, r r probably for years. So, so to all of those individuals that have worked together so hard to make this happen uh, over the many months, uh, I want to provide a heartfelt thank you. It's been a lot of hard work, and it's been tr truly exceptionally, you know, a great time, and, and we've, we've uh, accomplished some great things. So now it's, now it's time to allow you, the early adopters, the opportunity to download the, uh, the, the, the software application on your phones. And so let me explain how we'll do that. The panelists uh, will join our, our media guests. We'll join the early adopters out the door to the right into the foyer at the launch stations. And, and we'll begin the launch. Now, we want to conduct a ribbon uh, cutting 
at the launch stations this morning, so I'd encourage our panel members to, uh, to assemble there very quickly so we can do that. So with that, I'd like to thank you this morning for your attendance. I think this is an extremely exciting day, um, and, and I encourage you to collect your belongings. We'll quickly reconvene in the, uh, in the foyer, for the, foyer for, the, uh, for the download event. Thank you very much.